Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever increasing word feast, Abel. Mina is my name. It's been word, 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 word. And I'm excited that the word of his grace is growing up mightily on your inside. It's my prayer that the revelation of Jesus will so overtake you that nothing else will matter to you other than Christ. That's what brother Paul experienced when he said, I count all things as dung for the excellency of Jesus Christ, my Lord. That you come into the fullness of Christ, where Christ means everything to you. Where nothing in this world means much anymore to you. That's why brother Peter we said we are called to an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved for us in heaven. You know, when you realize that, it changes all the demographics. You know, Jesus speaking to those guys said to them, after these things do the Gentiles seek. He said, but for you, you don't seek what the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles seek what to eat, what to wear, where to sleep, and all of that. He said, but for you, you seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. When Christ becomes your pursuit, when Christ becomes your focus, in Christ you find everything else that you need. Remember all things were made for him and through him. So he is the reason for everything. He is the explanation of all things. And today we're going to get in the word. I'd like you to invite people share this video on your page. I'm so excited that we can share fellowship together and enjoy the word of his grace. We thank God for also technology that has made it easy for us to push the, out, the word out where you are every day, three times every day. I'm excited. You know, it's 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 10 p.m. So invite people to be part of all of these different times of broadcast. Now, well, today the word is going to come very powerful. You know, get your pen, your paper, and your Bibles, fasting your seatbelts. Let me take you right now on a gospel adventure into the service where the Spirit of God is already moving. Happy viewing. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 1. Therefore, we've been dealing with the subject of soteria. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which you have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing witness, them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Amen. So we've been dealing with the subject of salvation and we've said how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the word neglect means treat lightly or take for granted uh, what jesus has done for us and this was paul speaking to the hebrew believers when he was speaking to them about neglecting the salvation that is freely offered to us we began to look at the atonement and the reconciliation in what the word atonement means what it stands for and how it connects to relationship and fellowship and then we began to look into the price that was paid the price that was paid to give us this great salvation or redemption which is um, the price that jesus paid for us and we want we, we we started talking about what exactly was that price we want to look at the rudiments of redemption and the rudiments of salvation what exactly was the price that jesus paid for us and for what purpose was the price paid for and then we got to the passover where we began to see that the entire scripture speak about jesus jesus interprets the scriptures to us and we began to see you know that the bible is actually about jesus john chapter 5 verse 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify or give witness they are they we witness me the, the entire compilation of the scriptures is one message jesus christ the entire message of the bible is jesus christ so the testimony of the scriptures is about jesus every time you read the bible if you can't see jesus you have not read it because the mission of reading the bible is to see him jesus the message of the scriptures he's the message the bible is not a book about end time events no that's not the mission of it 
it's not a book about burning hell that's not the mission of the bible it's not a book about judging people that's not the mission the mission of the bible is to reveal christ the book talks about christ oh he said they are they which testify of me in john chapter 1 verse 44 and 45 if philip told nathaniel come and see him of whom the moses in the law and the prophets and the psalms talk about jesus it's about him it's about him it's a christocentric book pregnant with a christocentric message a message centered on christ so we began to look at the passover which actually has been renamed today as communion table or holy communion and all those things and i told you that there is no holy communion and no communion table in the bible all of those are they are words given by the roman catholics you know the pope of the roman catholic and they just give it as part of the sacraments which are extracurricular they are not part of the bible in the bible we don't have holy communion and we don't have communion table what we have in the bible is the passover that's all we have in the bible the passover so we are dealing with the passover here now all right so we began to deal with the passover as it pertains to salvation what message does the passover convey where salvation is concerned turn your bibles if you have a good one to the book of luke chapter 22 verse 8 and he sent peter and john saying go and prepare us the passover that we may eat go and prepare us what the passover look at verse 15 and he said unto them with desire i have desired to eat this passover with you before i suffer 16 for i say unto you i will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of god jesus was said to them look this one we are eating now is the last one i will eat with you the next one we will eat together is the fulfilled one this one is the pointer this one is a type this one is announcing that i am i am going to be the bread and the blood but i won't eat this passover with you until it is fulfilled the word fulfilled means there were conditions that are met jesus is saying i'm going to meet the conditions that now makes this one no more the passover where the passover ceases from elements to a person that's what he was talking about all right i'm going to open up more scriptures for you because you need to catch the body of truth so that you stand in it somebody shout i hear you all right look at the book of matthew 5 17 he's talking about fulfilling something think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill i have come to meet the demands or to supply the requirements i'm come to supply the requirements jesus is talking now look at me everybody let's think for a second when jesus sat at that passover with the disciples was that passover jesus idea or they have been taking it before jesus came they've been taking it it wasn't jesus's idea it's something they were doing before he came and when he came because he didn't come to destroy he did it with them but he told them this one i'm doing is the last one the next one i will do is a different type because it will be in the fulfillment that means this one is not fulfilled this one has requirements but i will fulfill the requirements romans chapter 10 verse 4 for christ is the end of the law he came to fulfill it he fulfilled it and ended it christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. he ended it he fulfilled it he's the end of the law amen meaning before jesus came nobody fulfilled it everything they did they were waiting for the fulfillment jesus came 
to fulfill the law. Luke 22, 17 and 18. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. Verse 18. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. I will not drink this one until the kingdom of God shall come. Now, Matthew puts it differently because I want to bring out something now. Matthew puts it differently and I'm going to show you how Matthew puts it. But remember that the Passover actually, when it was taken, had a particular protocol that was observed. The protocol was in taking the Passover, there must be four cups. There must be herbs and there must be the unliving bread. All of that put together was what constituted the Passover. It was not one cup, it was four cups. And these four cups, the first cup speaks of sanctification. The second cup speaks of redemption. The third cup speaks of, uh, of reconciliation, I mean restoration. Redemption, sanctification, reconciliation, and deliverance. These were the four cups. Now the one Jesus said, I will not take this with you until that day is the cup of restoration he took with them the cup of redemption he took with them the cup of sanctification he took with them a cup of deliverance but when he came to the cup of restoration he said this particular cup i will not take it with you today until that day in my father's kingdom what was he talking about john chapter 14 was where he was talking about let not your heart be troubled you troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you when i prepare the place i will come back and take you to myself the cup of restoration that where i am there you may be also so what he was talking about is that there will be a reconciliation between god and man we are man and god will live together communion the cup of restoration if you're hearing shout i hear you all right very soon you will understand what the cops stand for matthew 26 26 look at the way matthew puts it and as they were eating jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take it this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remissions of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom you will be in my father's kingdom with me and we will drink it anew we went to the table with an understanding of god's word in first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 purge out therefore the old living that he may be a new lump as you are unliving for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us paul is saying that all this passover that matthew talked about and luke talked about as something to eat on the table when it was fulfilled it was no more a table feast it became a person christ our passover is sacrificed now pastor praise you know these guys must have been shocked follow me look at me they've been always sitting down on a table with four cups with herbs and unleavened bread and they've been eating these do for the remission of sins these do in remembrance of me they keep doing that then jesus joined them in the passover and as they were sitting down to eat jesus takes the cup he said this is the new testament in my blood what is he talking about jesus is saying them telling them i'm the one you've been eating 
but you've been eating me in types and shadow this communion is not about eating it's about me what you was telling them is the message this communion has been trying to communicate to you all this while i'm the one this is the new testament in my blood <laughs> i'm the one you've been eating and they're like what for the first time it didn't make sense are you understanding are you following now i will show you why all that drama took place then he now said to them all this one you have eaten there's one this last cup we won't drink it together there is something i need to do to enable us drink that cup so we won't drink it now until that day now you need to think smart which day was he talking about is it rapture or the day he died and went to heaven and came back which one I went to heaven and came back. Correct. That's what he was talking about. You see, this Passover is about me. As often as you eat and drink, you're doing remembrance of me. So Jesus, the lamb, was a symbol to the Jews when they were leaving Egypt. Look at how Jesus puts it to them in John chapter 6 verse 53. John 6 53. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Somebody say life. life. Hey, citizens, wake up. Say life. life. Uh -huh. <laughs> Please take note of life. Take note of it. That uh, 54 whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day 55 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed so jesus now is putting an emphasis on the passover table and what he's telling them is that the passover table was for atonement of sins and remission of sins that's what matthew tells us and that's what luke tells us for the remission of sins luke tells us in remembrance of me eh? now jesus tells us it's not remission it's not remembrance eat it and have life they were drinking for sins the one jesus gives is life that's why I say, eat me, eat me. If you're with me, say, hey. hey. Great. He said, you have life. Eat me. My, this Passover, the one you're eating now, is life-giving. The other ones they were drinking were for sins. But when I died, I forgave your sins. So you don't take me anymore for forgiveness of sins. You take me for life. How many of you understand what I'm teaching here? If you catch the picture, shout amen. amen. All right, let's go on. Now, how many of you know that Exodus chapter 6 preceded the Passover, the first Passover? Because the first Passover is in Exodus chapter 12 so chapter 6 is before chapter 12 so now let's see what god is saying in chapter 6 verse 2 and god spake unto moses and said unto him i am the lord i am what i am jehovah i am yahovah it means i am that i am that's what it means verse 6 wherefore say unto the children of israel I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians take note and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm 
and with great judgments. Verse 7. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of Egypt. So now, God is telling them, take note, there are four things I want to do with you. This is before Pharaoh. This is before Passover. This is God's original plan. Four things. In those two verses, those four things are listed. Take note. The first thing there is, I will bring you out from under. Put it for me, chapter Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Number one. Number two. I will read you out of their bondage. Number three. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Number four. Verse seven. And I will take you to me for a people. Those are the four cups. The first cup there is I will bring you out from under. Second cup. I will rid you of their bondage. Third cup. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Fourth cup. I will take you to me and you shall be my people. Those are the four cups. Are you following me? Now, God was already announcing what the Passover will represent long before Exodus chapter 12. It was God's original plan. And I will show you why I needed to make you see that point. So it was that third cup that he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for the remission of sins. And then we saw the blood of the cup of redemption. Now, so the blood of Jesus is not just the same blood. It is one blood, but it is carrying out several functions. I'm talking about the rudiments now of this thing. Amen? So it's careless to say Jesus shed his blood once and for all. It's not just one blood. It is one blood, but it's not just one blood. There are different things of the same things. For example, Papa, what are you talking about? 1 Corinthians 1.30 But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. Number one. Help me shout it. Number one. Jesus. Number two. Jesus. Number three. Jesus. Number four. Jesus. What is that? Four cups. Four cups. The four cups they were drinking is no more a drink, it's a person. Teaching good. It's no more a drink. He is made. He didn't say drink. He said, I am made unto you. That's what I am to you. When I came inside you, I came inside you as the four cups that they were drinking on the table. Because the Passover is no more on the table, it's a person. The New Testament is a testament of the spirit. It's not a testament of eating and drinking. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace in the Holy Ghost. It's no more eating and drinking. Are you hearing me? He's made unto us four things representing the four cups of the communion. Or the four cups of the Passover. I will bring you from under their bondage. I will bring you from under their yoke. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will restore you to myself. And I will be a God to you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So it's time to get insight into these four things. Because they were referring to four different things. So when Jesus was saying, I will no more drink this communion with you, he was talking about these four cups. Cup one, the cup of sanctification. Cup two, the cup of deliverance. Cup three, the cup of redemption. Cup four, the cup of restoration. So in Exodus chapter 12, God having said this, and he said, I am this, I am that to you. Then in chapter 9, 10, 11, and 12, we see the plagues the plagues now listen to me everybody 
we will find out shortly in the course of preaching not in this service so in the course of course because we can't finish this this thing they don't finish up <laughs> in the course of teaching you will see that both israel and egypt suffered the first one two three and four plagues it affected all of them all of them but after the fourth plague it was only egypt suffering the plagues now we shall find out within the week as we study the rudiments of this redemption why did they all partake of the first four plagues and what happened for them not to partake of plague five to the end we shall find that out but that's not our issue for today our issue for today is the four cups i mean if you understand what i'm talking about here we shall locate that but be thinking yes seller be thinking why will they why did they partake of the first four plagues what was the turning point what happened why didn't they partake of five six seven eight nine ten what changed and why why did they partake in the first place so exodus chapter 12 look at it verse 5 your lamb shall be without blemish that's the lamb of the passover a male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats it shall be a male of the first year and remember the lamb shall be without what blemish that's the condition for that lamb that is used for the passover the lamb will be without blemish verse 6 and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month when you bring the lamb don't kill it keep it for 14 days and the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it in the evening all right so why did they keep it for 14 days do you know why they kept it for 14 days well it was a that is how god declared that it was going to be in redemption because even jesus himself was brought into jerusalem for some days before he was killed because that's the order for redemption that the lamb shall be brought in for 14 days before you kill it so when it came to the death of christ they brought jesus to jerusalem for some days before he was killed because the types are a message of the real see that's what makes the bible authentic because it is one message in different forms saying one thing do you understand what i'm saying they didn't just bring jesus to jerusalem and kill him no they kept him for some days according to the divine order that's why even the male of the firstborn has to be kept for 14 days see i hear you i'll soon show you another one get get back to that exodus chapter 12 verse 7 and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat verse 8 and they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire on unliving bread with bitter herbs they shall eat it with what with bitter herbs and it shall be without defect unliving bread means no defect no blemish no sin that's the meaning of un un unliving bread pure sinless bread verse 9 eat it not eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast it with fire his head and his legs and with the putinance thereof verse 10 and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire verse 11 and thus shall you eat it with your loins guarded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's passover so if we are going to be eating communion we are supposed to eat it in haste because that's the way the passover is eating you don't eat the, the passover in a relaxed manner you eat it in haste because it is the lord's passover and if it's the lord's passover they eat in haste hey that's a break yes sir i feel like dancing because i just Do you realize that when Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church, he said, wait for one another. So that means it's not the Lord's Passover. <laughs> because if it is the Lord's Passover, in haste, and you don't eat it with somebody, you eat alone. 
you eat it alone in a haste but when paul was talking to the corinthian church he said wait for one another so that means paul was not talking about passover in corinthian no he was talking about something else and we shall soon see it rightly dividing uh -huh. i was talking about i was talking about something else because the lost passover you eat in haste say i hear you you know the meaning of haste seriousness you eat it seriously verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt i will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt he didn't say i will smite all the egyptians take note i will smite all the firstborns not all the egyptians all the firstborns whether the egyptians or israelites the mission is to kill all firstborns the only firstborns that will be spared is any door where there is a blood mark so if an israelite does not put the blood mark on the door the firstborn of the israelite will be smitten why the mission is to smite all firstborns that are living in egypt except those with the blood on their doorposts in fact god even said if a stranger comes into your room circumcise him and keep him even if he's not a, an israelite he will not be killed but make sure you circumcise him first so it doesn't matter who you are once there's a blood mark on your doorpost it's a a declaration i believe the angel of death will pass are you hearing because god is no respecter of persons god is a respecter of his word he doesn't play with his word he said i will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute judgment i am jehovah verse 13 this is why the passover was instituted and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt so that blood was an immunity from evil it was an immunity to shield them from evil verse 13 and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses that when i see it i will pass over you it was a shield so it was not the passover that brought them out of egypt it was not the passover the passover was a shield from evil the passover was immunity from measles and from polio and from apollo and from measles and from shingles is there something called shingles and from smallpox eh? so all the diseases affecting people once they see that blood mark that family is immunized it's immunity i prophesy to the first one thousand of you what befall others will not befall you Amen. lift your hand and say the blood mark is on my life shout it very loud declare it with confidence declare it with confidence shield them from evil the blood mark on their doorpost was not the reason why they left egypt the blood mark had a mission to shield them from Egypt, from evil now if you look at verse 46 still dealing with the passover verse 46 of exodus 12 in one house shall it be eaten thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh abroad out of the house neither shall you break a bone thereof you shall not break a bone of the animal of the passover because when jesus will be crucified his bone will not be broken because it was a type 
and in the type everything must be must follow divine order don't break the bone of the animal because if the animal is a type of jesus jesus bone will not be broken i'm teaching good here can't you see jesus in exodus so don't break the bone bring him before the day 12 days before the Passover. why that's the order i prophesy in this church you will mess the devil up completely Amen. i prophesy over you by the finished work of christ you will manifest jesus in your generation Amen. you will demonstrate his power in your generation Amen. you will be a sign and a wonder to your world in the mighty name of jesus lift your hands and shout i receive the finished work don't speak economically because the blessing will not come economically i receive the finished work of christ i didn't hear your amen. amen so don't break the bone of the animal because jesus's bones will not be broken you know there were four people with jesus on the cross it's not two there were four there were two thieves and two malefactors was four of them so when they were breaking their bones because when they died they broke their bones after breaking the bones of the four thieves there was not enough time to break jesus's bone before they could break his bone joseph of aramataya has received express permission to bury the body so before they could reach his turn to break the bones, they have taken him from the cross that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Let me tell you this. If what God has spoken about you, nothing will abort it. Nothing. Somebody said the word of God has inherent power to fulfill itself. I didn't hear your amen. Sit down, let's continue before even though they broke the two legs i mean the four legs of the thieves and the four legs of the malefactors they didn't touch jesus bone because that's the order that's the prophecy that's the message that his bone shall not be broken so no accident will break the bone and no mistake will break it that the scriptures may be fulfilled i'm teaching good if you understand in short i'm understanding Exodus, where we are. Hallelujah. What does the bones deal with? The bones deal with physical things. The bones deal with physical things. The bones represent the Passover. They deal with physical things, earthly things. They deal with earthly things. That's the symbolism of the bones. Natural things. John 19, 36. For these things we are done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. A bone of him shall not be broken. That the scriptures it was not a mistake. It was not an oversight. It was the fulfill behind the scenes was the working of God's word spoken by the prophets and by the law. Somebody shout, I hear you. So we have seen that what happens in Luke 22, Matthew 26 was the feast of Passover. They did it before Jesus came because it speaks of Jesus. Okay? This is my body and this is my blood of the new testament somebody say i hear you it's interesting that in acts of the apostles chapter 2 which is what some people have been using to justify this thing they call holy communion or the lost table the apostles were breaking bread daily but that breaking of bread we have to interpret it they were breaking bread how many times daily in acts chapter 2 verse 42 open it up 
and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers verse 46 and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart what did they eat their meat was not communion they were breaking bread they were not celebrating passover breaking bread is love feast they were sharing food breaking bread means they were sharing food because there was scarcity of food so when they come to church they have a love fellowship we are those that have share with those that don't have that sharing they call it breaking of bread it's not passover teaching good and the same way they were sharing food they were sharing clothes and they were sharing food from house to house because in some houses there was no food so people would bring food they eat together they would take to another house to make sure that nobody dies of hunger in the midst of plenty with the brethren touch your neighbor's hand touch your neighbor's hand don't be afraid just touch your neighbor's hand tell him while i'm alive hunger will not kill you any day you're hungry look for me I'm very serious about it. That's why you are in a church. You are not permitted to be hungry in this church. And if you're hungry, it's choice. Because there are people in this church that will give you food for the next one year without thinking. I'm teaching now. There are people right now inside this congregation that can give you food steadily for the next one year without calculating you in their budget because the food they throw away in their house every day is enough to feed three people they're here so you shouldn't die of hunger in the midst of brethren except you're not a part of the body even if you're not we're supposed to be a blessing to all say i hear you i'm not here you say i hear you so if you're hungry is by choice because you have not opened your mouth to say i'm hungry and nobody answered you and the reason why you think you shouldn't talk it for shame is because you're proud and pride go ahead before a burial <laughs> eh? it doesn't matter uh -uh. If you ask a brother for food, he tells you, does he have to ask the next brother? But don't be the one asking all the time. You too should believe God to give others. I'm teaching you. Say breaking bread means sharing food. Yeah, that's the meaning. It's not Passover. Sharing food. They were sharing food because of the need. In Acts chapter 6, there was a murmuring because the breaking of bread was not reaching widows is that true uh -huh. there was a murmuring because the sharing of food that's the same church where they started sharing from chapter two after some time in the sharing partiality entered some were carrying more than others so murmuring entered the church and the apostle says shall we live serving the word of god and serve tables no we will give ourselves to prayer and the word let us appoint men full of the holy ghost and of honest report whom we may appoint over this business so they appointed people that were in charge of food sharing while the apostles were in charge of word sharing like i'm sharing word now that's my job there should be other people like we have in the church in the welfare department whose work is to share food I can't share word and share food i will i will be confused because there are some people that are experts in taking double portion <laughs> and i can't contend with their with their skill they've been doing it for long they have a phd in taking double even while you're looking double will enter their hand without you knowing when 
they are skilled so we need men full of the holy ghost that when they look at you they will tell you by word of knowledge bring back that one you took two bring it back he said when did i say the spirit just showed me bring it back <laughs> teaching good another one in the feeding of the five thousand was it not bread they broke jesus took bread and broke it was that communion was that supper i mean was that a uh, passover no it was sharing of food but it is called breaking of bread don't be confused understand bible language it was sharing of food the feeding of the five thousand was the sharing of food jesus gave thanks broke the bread and he told them ask them to sit down then he gave them to share and they shared the food for everybody to eat and when they finished 12 baskets were left over and they gave it to whoever wanted i think they gave it to the boy that offered the food i think so because it's not recorded what is recorded is that 12 baskets were left over that's all that was recorded god doesn't give gist did you hear god doesn't give gist that's why he doesn't tell you uh, and when the 12 baskets were left over they took it and gave, that's gist he stopped at where the message ends no no gist that's why you don't know who the thieves on the cross were they didn't give us their name because god doesn't give gist do you understand god doesn't give gist that's why the woman with five husbands jesus will have called their names but he didn't call their names because their names will be gist there's no point for the names you have five husbands the mission is to make us see that i know where you're coming from it's not for gist purpose i'm teaching now the bible is not a book of gist it's a revelation of jesus if you understand the shout i hear touch your neighbors like say are you hearing this is to help those that are meditating Say breaking of bread. Say it very loud. You are talking with fear. Say it very loud. All right. So breaking of bread means to share food. In Luke chapter 24, when they sat at me, Jesus took bread and broke it. That was not Passover. It was food they were eating. It was food. He took bread, broke it, and they ate. And they ate. He took bread, broke it. That it was food. But we said when it was evening evening food is called supper english people call it supper supper is not it's not passover supper is not passover supper is evening food by the white man let's go for supper it means dinner so when you hear the bible say and they sat down for supper what it means is they sat down for dinner not for communion don't be confused supper means dinner evening food so when you read the new testament you won't see communion you won't see passover practices why the coming of jesus ended the passover and jesus now is our passover passover is no more 18 passover is a person teaching good why do i need to know this because that is part of your salvation so you don't keep eating things and thinking as you are eating them you are eating the body of jesus you ate the body of jesus when you got born again the moment he entered you you ate his body and drank his blood he lives in you amen, amen. oh amen. amen somebody shout jesus lives in me jesus. i live in him we are joint heirs i love him he loves me so jesus never instituted the lord's supper like meat and drink jesus own is eternal life he said eat that you may have life that you may have what life life eat that you may have life look at first corinthians eleven twenty. you will see something here now when you come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper did you see paul for in eating everyone take it before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken paul say every time you people gather you come for supper some of you will eat 
Others will go home hungry. What Paul is saying is, look, you call it love feast. You say you are brethren, yet you eat without considering one another. Paul is rebuking them for their lack of love practice in their love feast. He say you call it love feast, but it is a feast without love. Because some eat and are drunk, others eat, others don't see to eat. In fact, to show you that that thing they were doing in Corinthians 11 that Paul was talking about was not the Lord's Supper. He says some of you bring a jar of alcohol. Do you bring a jar of alcohol to, come to, to supper? He said you bring it and when we say it's time to eat, you open your jar and start drinking. <laughs> Till they start talking nonsense inside church. He said, look at it now. For in eating, everyone take it before or that there's confusion. Everybody's rushing survival. Eh? And one is hungry and another is drunk. Paul is rebuking their attitude in that first Corinthians. I'm teaching now. Paul is rebuking their attitude, their callousness in their love feast. Amen. In fact, in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, Paul was saying, if anybody call you to a feast, go. Because that's it. They were, they were a festive. That church, they like eating too much. Eating programs. Ah, that church, Corinthian church. They eat and drink. They like the thing too much. Every small gathering, there will be food. Everywhere they gather, if there's no food, they won't come. Love feast. Uh -huh. Church eating. Uh -huh. They like it very well in the Corinthian church. So Paul was indicting them for their lack of love in their feast. In fact, Jude said, there are spots in your feast of charity. You call it love feast, but it's full of spots. Somebody say, I hear you. So he was dealing with people not walking in love. They were doing it like a love feast. What is the Passover? It is the death of Jesus. We saw that. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Exodus 15, 26. And said, if thou will hearken, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Somebody said, the Lord healeth me. Remember, God said, I will take away from you their body. I will redeem you from their yoke. I will bring you to myself. I am the Lord. Okay? Now, God is saying, if you will keep this and diligently hearken, I will not allow the Egyptian diseases come on you. I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed thee. Remember, for the purpose of observation, that when God spoke these words to Israel, it was before the Ten Commandments were given. It was before the Ten Commandments were given. So obviously, in Exodus chapter 15, where we're just reading now, it was a continuation of what God said in chapter 6. I will remove you from under their body. I will take their sicknesses from you. I am the Lord. That he led the Jehovah Rapha. The word Rapha has different shades of meaning in the Greek, but the strongest of these is to immunize you against something. Rapha, I am Jehovah, your immunization. I am Jehovah. That is to say, when I enter you, you are immunized. When I enter you, nothing affecting others can affect you i'm teaching now it's not saying you will be sick then i will heal you no once i enter you there will not even be the occasion first where you are sick for you to be needing healing i am your immunization Palada, i prophesy to you from this day sickness will die when you appear kabaya moshatala Lift your hands and shout, I can never be sick. 
Say the immunization is living inside me. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, my immunity. I didn't hear your amen. It's not that you will be sick, then we pray for No, no. In the first place, you will not be sick. Why? I am your immunity. Christ, our Passover, is inside you. And I don't care what has been wrong in your body. It ends now. Amen. High blood pressure, sugar, diabetes. I don't care what the name is. I speak to you by the audacity of my office. It dies now. Amen. Under the unction of the finished work of Christ. Bayata, I designed the body of the Lord with you. His body took it. You don't have it. Everything making noise in your body, I flush out. Amen. Every infection, I flush out. Amen. Tumors die. Growths die. Eye problems be healed. Hearing conditions be cured. If your amen is louder, it manifests now. I am the Lord. Tabaya no kata. Juju juju. Kemunaga. Rekota naga. Molono kuburoto teteheya. Joboya naga. Hilaboda. Kopoto. Kopota. Kopota. Ekeda. Kulada. Every weakness in your body every failness and every timidity and every everything that is not of god making noise in your body i speak by the audacity of the finish work of christ it dies this moment i'm the lord that healeth thee i'm the lord that healeth thee christ our passover please sit down I'm getting into the heart of this message now. It's not that you will be sick. Then the elders will come up. No, no. To start with, you won't even be sick. It's not that first of all, the thing will hit you. Then you, no. I am the Lord. You are immunity. When a child is immunized from polio, he can live in the midst of polio reading children. It cannot affect him. Is that true? When you are immunized from chicken pox, even if you touch chicken pox, it will not enter you. Is that true? Why? By reason of that immunity, there is resistance. What is immunity? Immunity means resistance in your body against any external intrusion. There's an immunity inside you where even if disease hug you, it cannot penetrate. We're not, talk, we're not joking here. Why not joke? I know what I'm talking about. There's a name of this healing man of God who preached on dominion over sickness, over death. Um, um, John G. Lake. He lived in a city in America where he preached the healing power of God. They said 100 years after he died, nobody was sick in that town. The healing revelation of God's healing power in his life sanitized the entire town for 100 years. One man. Nobody in that town was sick for 100 years. By the light of one man. Hear me well. I'm not saying that you'll be sick small. No. I'm saying from today by the body of Jesus by the blood of Jesus you and sickness will never have anything in common Amen. pastor praise under the types and shadow there was no feeble among them under type and shadows under drama as they were doing drama of Jesus nobody was feeble nobody was sick if under the drama nobody was feeble nobody was sick under the drama their eyesight never went dim under the drama nobody carry walking stick under the drama nobody sat on a wheelchair under the drama nobody needed operation how much more inside the real i declare to you by the finished work of jesus you and sickness will never have something in common lift your hand and shout by his stripes i am healed Say it three times. Two. 
tree. I didn't hear your amen. I am the Lord. It is my will to heal. I am the healer. Exodus 23, 25. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Under the Old Testament, there was a condition. In the New Testament, the promise is there without a condition. Because Jesus has met the condition. I will take sickness what away somebody says taking away from my house i didn't hear your amen deuteronomy 7 15 and the lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil disease of egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate you anybody that hates you should get ready for cancer instead of it coming on you it will land in the house of your enemies because on you there is the blood of the passover and when i see the blood so as he's passing over he must land somewhere he must land where somewhere so anybody that hates you should be careful because all the disasters that were to befall you will end in their house see i hear kaboya I will put it on those that hate you. It is not God putting it. God is only allowing it to operate like that. I've taught you that. Because I will allow it. I'm the Lord that healed thee. So healing is the will of God. Jesus is our Passover. The Jews had to do it many years as an ordinance. And they understood that immunization operation. They knew how it worked for them. So in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, look at what Paul said. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Eh? Till it comes. That means the eating and drinking showing the Lord's death was fulfilled when the Lord died. It was announcing his death so now when he died he fulfilled the ordinance i'm not am i teaching are you understanding he fulfilled the ordinance observe that the blood of matthew 26 jesus mentioned it he mentioned sins for the remission of sins and we know that the blood of jesus was shed for the remission of sins but when Paul mentioned it, he did not mention sin. This is because the New Testament in my blood was what Paul was announcing. Why didn't he mention sin? Ephesians 1 7 said, Forgiveness of sins have been given to you already. Colossians 1 13 says, Your sins are forgiven already. So what Paul mentioned was not sin, he mentioned discerning the lost body he said and for the first time this is the first time that paul will scripturally and doctrinally explain why people are sick and why people die and why people are weak this is the first time that paul the apostle will doctrinally and scripturally explain why people are sick why people die young and why people are weak he tells us it is because they do not discern the Lord's body. What does it mean to discern the Lord's body? It means to have knowledge, to have a revelation of what that body means. That's discernment. To discern, to know what the body has done and refuse anything to come on you that the body has taken care of that's discernment i discern that leukemia was on jesus i cannot have it because he took it on my account that's discernment i cannot be sick 
all my sicknesses and pain were put on him he can't take it from me and i take it also is double jeopardy yes i can't take it he took it i don't have it somebody shout i hear you that is how to think let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus today i am on a total war against sickness total war none of you is permitted in this church both by the finished work of christ and by my apostolic authority none of you is permitted to be sick any longer that amen is not good enough can i get louder than those on television lift your right hand and shout i can never be sick three times two three this is the first time and the only time paul talked about it say for this cause not causes one cause there's only one reason people are sick in the church only one and there's only one reason why people are weak in the church only one and there's only one reason why people die only one it's not it's not multiple cirrhosis is that english like that is that a disease like that eh? is it multiple cirrhosis eh? multiple sclerosis sclerosis i don't even know it's not important to me what is important is that you are healed multiple sclerosis it attacks all the system and shuts it down it's like hiv oh this is where your head will be doing like this what kind of disease satan is wicked uh, yes like i was saying for what now peace be still <laughs> Satan is wicked. You see a man carrying Satan. If you play with Satan, there are some people before they talk, they have to do her lesson. Good morning. Fine, Satan. <laughs> Satan. Don't play with that idiot. Somebody say idiot. You see a fine girl when she laughs, <laughs> note it. Satan has removed all. So because of that, she doesn't laugh all the time. <laughs> How are you? Fine. <laughs> Satan, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when a strong man fully armed, he pets his palace, his goods are in peace. But when the stronger than he shall come i have news for you the stronger has come he lives inside you from this day we batter the devil somebody shall satan you're under my feet i crush you there are some people every time they eat they become pregnant so because of that they're afraid of eating see a young girl has stomach look like nine months nothing inside sit and just carry uh, pipe put it <laughs> Sir, madam he said no i'm not married you're not married oh sorry what happened he said i don't know the thing is just growing what is growing it it was not so in the beginning i know what i'm talking about a single girl carrying a constant pregnancy no brother can look at her side and you're playing with that satan Constantly. And when you touch the tummy, it's hard. 
hard as if there's something inside. It's just Satan molesting, harassing, and embarrassing the small girl. For nothing. She didn't do him anything. You don't have to do Satan anything for him to do you some things. So you too, he doesn't have to do you something before you do him something. You didn't hear what I said. You don't have to have a reason for crushing Satan. Crush him because he is crushable. <laughs> Hela Tobaya. Nemano kulana kotogo yoda. Aya. Jekota tataya. Mereko degeya. Every disease hiding inside your body, I expose and discharge it. I expose and discharge it. I expose and discharge it. Somebody shout, I receive. Immunity, immunity against disease immunity. and sickness in my body my body is the temple of the holy ghost i cannot be sick do you know there's a way satan will hit somebody's body at the age of 25 all his hair will be white not only white even his body will look 70 at 25 he can't even see well. Is Satan for this purpose? The Son of God is manifested. Why? That he may destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil around your house, around your business, around your marriage, every work of the devil around your destiny, every work of the devil around your future, and every work of the devil around your career. I speak by the finished work of Christ. It's destroyed now. It's destroyed now. If you stand up and shout that amen, it's destroyed now. 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 In the name of Jesus somebody said by the blood of jesus i am released from destruction i have the passover living in me his name is jesus i resist the devil every idea of sickness i resist you in the name of jesus i didn't hear your amen those of you here that are infected with gonorrhea and hiv stand and listen to me carefully those of you that have inflicted with syphilis you're standing here you're hearing me i know what i'm talking about in the spirit those of you that have been urinating blood makota nagaya japata japata as your amen will come like thunder i cause that virus die 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 Everything that is threatening your life, body weakness, you don't know where it's coming from, sleeping and struggling to wake up, every symptom, an attack, an arrow, every missile, shatana, burata, katana, hogaya, koyada, koyata, I come against every form of disease. I curse you by the everlasting blood, by the blood of eternal redemption. We die and dry up. We die and dry up. Wither and dry up. Lift your two hands and pray in tongues like a madman. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. He took it, I don't have it. In the name of Jesus, let your amen come on a note of finality. Stand and listen. Put up for me on the screen. Acts 9.33. Put it up. Put it up. And there he found a certain man named Enias, which had kept his bed eight years. He had kept his bed. Some of you have got to where you call it my disease. This is my sickness. It's heartburn. This is my sickness. It's asthma. It's my sickness. 
it has been with me for too long that it has become part of my belongings bible say kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy verse 34 and peter said unto him Aeneas, jesus christ make the whole arise and make thy bed and he arose after two hours i speak to you now whatever it was in your body jesus make it the whole 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 say he took it i don't have it by his stripes i am healed i am healed i am healed say Aeneas Jesus make it the whole Aya! put up Acts 13 from 37 but he whom God raised again saw no corruption Higerosh, say he saw no corruption I will see no corruption shout it don't be afraid one more time by partaking of the divine nature we have escaped from corruption say he saw no corruption i will see no corruption now this was this was this was this was the rendition of paul's message the next thing he said in verse 38 be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man that saw no corruption is preached unto you what what have i been preaching since that your sins are yes that's the message the forgiveness of sin is not a prayer it's a preaching when i preach it and you believe it the sins are forgiven it's not something you pray about forgiveness of sin is preached it's not prayed did you see that preached preached unto you what it's a message it's not a prayer Oh, Father, forgive me. No, no. As I'm preaching that your sins are forgiven, once you believe it, fear. Yes, Say, I hear you. Hey, go shout Verse 39. Look at what happened. The outcome of hearing that message. And by him, all that believed are justified. How many things? How many things? All things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. No, Moses couldn't. He couldn't. Moses couldn't do it. But when you hear about this man that didn't see corruption, who by him forgiveness of sins are preached, you are justified from all things. Now, 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 now. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Chapter 14, verse 7. The message continued the whole of chapter 13 then it entered chapter 14 and continued to verse 7 in the course of the preaching of the forgiveness of sins look at verse 7 and there they preach the gospel that means that's the gospel the gospel is the forgiveness of sins and what happened in verse 8 and there sat a certain man at least ra, impotent in his feet they told him that he can never walk his legs are paralyzed lifeless if you carry his leg it will fall like vegetable impotency the man was impotent the bones have turned to water impotent listen i don't care where you are even if your pocket is impotent i don't care what impotency you're suffering maybe they've told you your sperm count is water it doesn't matter this man was impotent where in his feet and because of the impotency he was crippled from his mother's womb that is from the day he came out he couldn't walk the man has never known the joy of walking but the man had that by this man is preached unto you what the forgiveness of sin as he was hearing the message like you're hearing me today something happened to the man hey i said something happened to the man somebody shout something happened to the man who has never walked next verse nine the same had paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed because when you hear this kind of message your faith comes alive 
so when paul saw like i'm seeing faith all over the building when paul saw faith what did he do next verse next verse said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked by the faith of god i see in the building i release you now whatever you couldn't do before go back and do it now go back and do it now go possess territories go take over territories go seize territories your body is well your finances are released your doors are opened the letters you are waiting for they are released the phone call you've been waiting for has been released your body is well in the mighty name of jesus be healed in your bones be healed in your heart be healed in your lungs be healed in your blood be healed in your kidneys be healed in your eyes be healed in your ears be healed in your brain from your head to your legs be made whole now in the mighty name of jesus it is done 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 lift your hands and give thanks lift your hands and give thanks i'm not hearing your voices the power of god is in this place the power of god is in this building every oppression of the devil is broken every depression is broken every harassment is broken every attack is broken the voice of the devil is silenced majata 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 thank you my father in the mighty name of jesus it is done it is done it is done those of you that had medical conditions they are corrected those of you have not understood your bodies for some time now your body is restored he finished it this week will be a harvest of testimonies Amen. testimonies amen. good news will be flowing all over your house amen. i'm not hearing that amen. amen i said this week is a week of testimonies amen. good news will be flowing all over your house amen. if you believe it go ahead and give yourself a little celebration amen. give yourself give yourself oh my goodness give yourself a little celebration Give yourself a little celebration. Unto she that believeth, there shall be a performance. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. Please don't adjust yourself and don't go away. Just stay with me patiently. You know, the word of God comes to give us light. And the entrance of his life, of his word, give it light. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. The word of God is so powerful. It can totally reshape the totality of your life. And that's why it's good to pay attention, to pay heed to the word of his grace. For those of you that have been following my teaching, you don't belong to any local assembly. God sets the solitary in families. God wants you to belong to a body of believers where Christ is the center of everything. So with this mandate of my life, we have opened campuses all over the world. And they are all on the screen right now. There's one closer to where you are. If you want to hook up with our campus and be committed to the campus so you can grow and help others to grow, shoot me a mail today and I will connect you to the coordinator of our campus in your locality so you can identify with brethren who are following my teachings and grow together in the grace of God, maximizing the vision and the mandate on our lives to reintroduce Jesus to this generation. If I get you a mail today, I will hook you up with the coordinator in your area where you're living. But I'm excited and you need to tell people about the campuses all over the world. It's important. So we can fellowship together, learn the word together, go out, evangelize, bring people into the kingdom, establish them and watch them grow in the knowledge of Christ. Remember, when we see Jesus face to face, we will account to him of our stewardship where we use what we have been taught in the word of his grace to enrich other people's lives. So don't take it for granted. It's very important. You know that we we respond to what christ has done by making it available to other people so make sure you make a list of people to invite to this platform who will come in and be affected by the message mobilize them invite them share on your page and get more people to be part of what god is doing 
right here on the Facebook broadcast. But guys, you know, we love you. We're excited and we're looking forward to hearing from you on testimonies of what's happening in your life as you continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you guys. Looking forward to bring more word to you. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. This is forever. This is forever. This is forever. Forever I am saved by your love. Never seen love like this, love so great to rescue me. You paid the price for me, cared for me, set me free. We've been made alive, thanks to Jesus who gave his life. Nothing can be like it, no one can do more than that. You gave me power to spread the fragrance of your grace. I am alive and not the same, now and forever I am saved. This is forever. He was my sacrifice All I need is receive what he provides Where are the blood buttons? Right here on the one The righteousness of God Right here on the one Anyone saved by the word Right here on the one Right yeah. here on the one Right here on the one God loved me way before he made the earth Gave me power over sickness and death So now I testify that I am alive And beyond that I have eternal life It has been his will that we all be saved And to know him and to walk by his faith All who believe you know what's the word He gave you power so you can not share his love The is forever, ever Fully functional, nothing better Unconditional, never, ever Letting go of me The way love is forever, ever Fully functional, nothing better Unconditional, never, ever Letting go of me This is forever This is forever